Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this morning. We have a guest here in the studio, but we're really excited about having him. So first, we've got to get our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and his hardworking company up there in Southport. And I've got some, uh, we've got all kinds of stuff coming up. So let's, we'll talk about this, but let's get our weather first because you know how important it is. How today's going to be 88, low 76, and a water temperature is 87 degrees. We talked about it. it the water temperature is hot. It's late July and August will be the hottest time of the year. Uh, I do not have the river readings this morning, but we, we'll we move on to the tide chart. The river readings always brought to us by Mountain Dew, get out and do. But the river's in good shape. It's, it's really uh, it's really catching some fish on the river, and I'm telling you, I've, I've got some good reports. From, and also the feeder creeks. It, it was a good good weekend. The tide chart, uh, well, the tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn, and we're looking at the chart. We've got a pretty decent tide. We got the low this morning at 12, well, right at noon. 12.35 is low and high is at 9.15 tonight. And let's go ahead and do our fishing game times. Uh, well, we'll do a relaxed segment, but our wind direction will be coming out of south, southeast at 8 to 10. Okay, let's take a break, come back with our special guest. Okay, welcome back, and we do have our guest. <laughs> We're not, That's right. He's, he's, He's not considered a guest. He's our co-host. Always have great to have Bill Allen That's here. That's what happens when you leave the, the door unlocked. I, I Anybody's really, liable to walk people, in. People don't realize that uh, you do a, a radio show next door a lot also, so you, you're a busy man. He's, I don't know how I get involved with this, but I, I am doing the the uh, Coach James Hale show uh and that's literally right next door. Which is literally right <laughs> next door. I don't know. I don't know how I get. I know how you and I got together. But yeah. anyway, you know, we Greg and I made a couple of visits over there in the past, and then, you know, the, I, they talk about football all the time, and of course, you know, what I know is baseball. So yeah. I started, you know, doing the women's college World Series and the men's college World Series, and you know, and I'm. I'm chiming in on a lot. Of, I'm educating them about baseball. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. You're a baseball expert. But before we forget, I want to tell you how good that I'm, how good I'm getting technology-wise. That, that's the kind of an oxymoron. But uh, I was in uh, Tallahassee at Sam's. You know, uh, we had, Don and I had to go over there. I had a, had a meeting over there. I had to pick some stuff up, and I. You know, of course, we were wandering around Sam's because that's a central place. We met somebody in the parking lot. That's how we did it. But, uh, and I'm walking around there, and this gentleman, you know, hollers at me. And he goes, Panhandle Outdoors. And I'm thinking, what in the world? And, you know, in Sam, Tallahassee. In Tallahassee. In Tallahassee. And it's, uh, I didn't get your last name, but I never get the first name. So Dennis. You know, Dennis up in Sneeds, you and your wife, I, hello. I'm sorry I didn't get your last name, but I, I'm starting to try to get better to write it down because I see people all the time asking me about this show. It's mm -hmm. The popularity of this show is unbelievable. But a uh, real nice guy, he said they're doing a lot of frog gigging right now, you know, and I, he sent pictures before. Yeah. And I don't know if you, I'm sure you remember, uh, but he's a real nice pictures. guy. Yeah. yeah, and I said, you know, I enjoyed talking to him. and didn't get to talk to him long, but... I've said this, but it, it, you know, what I do, maybe three to five shows a month with you on yeah, average, yeah. you know, uh -huh. or something, but people just speak to me everywhere, yeah. you know, grocery stores and tackle stores and everything else. And it's it's great. I mean, feel free. Uh, and, you know, I know yeah. you love to hear from people. Yeah, we do. And it's, it's just so uh, just heartwarming and refreshing when people come up to you and, and, and talk to you about the show because it just sort of inspires us to keep on keeping on. Yeah, and... Uh, and boat ramps. You know how many times, what, the few times nowadays we get to fish together, we wind up at the boat ramp for, you know, a while talking to people, that, that, which, is, which is fine. That's a good hangout, the boat ramp. It is a good place to be. It's a great place to be. Yeah. So, Well, that's cool. That's cool. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, next segment. We're going to show some pictures, but also we're going to talk about it. Your know, late summer fishing patterns. And, well, and frog gigging is one of them. Late summer, those frogs may be eating all summer. And sure. They, they're fat and juicy and... You know, the frog legs gonna be good this time of year. Yeah, we got to get with Bill Shields. 
That's right. <laughs> That's right. I know he went down to the houseboat last weekend to catfish, and I, and I couldn't go. And he, he stayed down there, I think, one night. Yeah. And I haven't caught up with him yet to, to, to talk to him about it. But uh, and I hate missing those trips to the houseboat. Well, I've been doing that since I was know, probably 18 years old. Did he, uh, did he set the lines out, or do you know? Yeah, Bill has got, uh, he's, he's got like three sets of uh, trot lines now that he runs. And okay. may run a few bush hooks, but he's gotten more back into running trot lines like we did when we were yeah. 18 years old staying down there, so. We'll which was do, a couple of years ago. We gotta do that pretty soon. We gotta, I, well, yeah. We gotta yeah. put it on our schedule. We ain't got anything else on Yeah, but schedule. everything else is on the schedule. Well, I mean, we were saying. talking about that earlier Goodness with the, like with my business and the, the oh. travel that I've got coming up and, but again, doing all this other stuff. You know? I know, I know. It's but crazy. I enjoy it. It's crazy. I do. Well, you got a couple of pictures. You know, Greg's been, Greg, yeah. he has Greg in all the time off uh, and going fishing. It, I mean, you well, staying busy. Well, Greg's better at it than I am. He will just absolutely force himself to go, you know, between running the city and the funeral home and everything else. But, yeah. you know, he gets to the point where, and Lynn's kicking him out of the house if he hadn't been fishing enough. And Donna's doing the same thing. She's just kicking me, though. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Jeff. Okay, I, okay we got this with, one. Uh, yeah, this is a and look who this is with, Billy Archer. <laughs> you know, folks, Billy Archer can catch fish. He's yeah. been catching fish since he was so Greg, born. So Greg, he's right, and, and uh, of course that's the one we're going to. But Greg's group is uh, some old high school buddies and. Uh, buddies. Yeah, he gets together with them, and then Ralph Vogler from Carpet Connection. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, local business here that we've all used for years. Mm -hmm. I think Ralph runs a trip every year with. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, because some of his family members go, some of the dogs his, go. His work, he takes his staff. You know, I mean, yeah. that's like a, that's like a bonus. And I think this next one is a. Uh, uh, look at them in the middle there with that goofy hat on. Now, that's that a different. Uh, trip? That's our esteemed mayor. Yeah, this okay. is the trip with. Uh, I believe this is the trip with uh, Ralph, but they road. also, Whoa. on the way back in, they did a little uh, fast trolling. Look at that. I'll just go back there a second if I can. But they did a little fast trolling, picked up a Wahoo, you know, pick up the speed, put out something purple. And, and, and they, I've talked to several people that have caught Wahoo, but you know what? I haven't spoken to anybody that's caught any king yet. It's been, it, had, it started it's, off, uh, but it's starting off really slow. It's the peers, odd. They're not catching any off the pier. It's odd. Mm -hmm. And then that last one, that was that was a, that same trip, you know, a, again, a different trip. That, good, uh, good trip. That they wore them out on. But, you know, hey, Billy Archer, you know, he's hard, he's hard to get because he's popular. You know, everybody wants well, to book with Billy, but it's Seminole win. If you can, you can go with Billy. He, he could catch fish now. He's yeah, great at and, it. And then what you know, what Ralph Boger does with his company, although it's local, he does a trip. Those a lot of folks are coming down from South Georgia, from Montgomery. They lose little small companies and all. Yes. And that's their reward, one of their rewards. Heck that's yeah, one of their perks of working with a company. So and you know, see. Snapper, I haven't talked to anybody that hadn't limited out on Snapper. And you yeah, look the size of yeah. some of those big sales. Those are nice. Yeah, yeah, all big ones. Yeah, We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, so here with Bill and I are talking about fishing. We don't really have anything planned for the show. We're just going to decide we're going to come. <laughs> we don't have nothing written down. We're just going to come and talk. So. As usual. Yeah, and uh, we're like, it started the late summer pattern. You know, we just last last week of July and August is here. And, you know, I always say, Bill, August is one of the slowest months fishing. Of course, we get, you know, pick up scallops and things like that. But, uh, yeah. you can still catch fish in August. You can catch fish, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and Greg has. That like we said, you know, he's he's snuck out a couple of times without me. One of them on my birthday. Now, how about that? But anyway, I, he, went, he, he went fishing on your birthday, and, and you know, yeah, but he never hesitates to send me back the picture, say, "Look what's going on." But <laughs> I wish you were here. You know, I mean, right now, the thing that that I get asked about a lot is uh, this dark water. You know, and how in the world do you fish this dark water? Well, the first thing is, you know, you still you still need moving water. You got to fish the right tides. You know, mm -hmm. and their their patterns don't change that much. But you, you know, early and late because I mean it's it's dangerous out there when that sun gets up. I mean it's hot. I mean I, you know, and you can get those little chill pads. Have you ever seen those? You know, yeah. that the frog togs makes. 
Mm -hmm. I know Blue Water carries them, and I, I, I think mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of places do, but you put it in your ice chest, mm -hmm. you know, not the one with the fish in it. If you're kidding, put it in the ice chest, then you kind of wring it out and put it over your, your neck, and it really does bring your body temperature down because this, this is some serious heat that we got out yes, here. However, is. you know, what what has been happening, you know, the, the water gets dark and you start want to you want to start fishing darker colors, darker lures and that kind of mm -hmm. thing, which is, you know, that's, that's good, you know, it works, but the fish have a hard time, hard time seeing too, so, Typically, if you're using a Paul Brown like we use a ton, you're going to want to fish that a little more erratically and a little faster and, you know, still give it that pause because it's the motion, it's the moving of water, and it's creating some vibrations that, you know, help those fish find it. But then, of course, you know, going to top water, yeah. you know, going to top water, which is the thing I love to do. and. And I don't think it makes any difference what color that you use yeah. because it's it's the motion, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's the, it, you know, it's the motion. It's, sometimes it, the lack of motion. It's too. creating it. Like you have on that one. That's on the screen there. That, that color what have I got? Yeah, right here. Yeah. This one, right here. That, now, Greg, this is Greg's. That's a bright color in it. Uh, uh, they call that on gold. Is that a bronze spoon? Well, I'm going to tell you about it. It's up on that one. Yeah, I don't know how to work this. No, that is Greg. Greg will will buy some top waters and some colors and stuff that I'd be too embarrassed to bring up to the <laughs> counter. He has some wild colors. You know that one is uh, is a pink, and I think the bottom of it has a little bit of yellowish green on it. But you know it's it's the okay. action that you're creating on top, and especially now when they they can't see as well. It's the action you're creating on top, and okay, uh, that you got to move it. Yeah, up. that's uh, oh, that's uh, the other one that he, another one that he called on on basically the same bait, and I'm talking for him now. Uh, that oh, that's yeah. a, that's the uh, the hard bait that he was using instead of the Paul Brown. Okay. And, top water. Uh, and it's you see it's darker. You know, it's a darker color, and and mm -hmm. that gives a lot of action too. And this is a good example. That's a 21 inch trout that he caught on that same bait, but it's so dark that he completely missed it, Greg, and he got hooked in the side. So that was a heck of a battle, but uh, that's him right there. I mean, that's a nice fish. And I wanted to get over to, uh, that's another red he, he that's picked pretty up. pretty color, on we're a, talking about a color. Uh, so well, they get, you know, that's yeah. the color they get when it's dark like this. Mm -hmm. Now that one is a, is a little bit lighter color. It's got a beige on it, but uh, those are those silver. those skitterwalk Skitter baits in there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and that he broke out that Paul Brown. That's the, the silver with the red head that really shouldn't work. But now it's hard to tell right there. That's a 26 and a half inch trout that weighs six and a half pounds. Good. He good. has got some serious shoulders on him right there, but. Um, uh, how big? Say again. How big that was? He, he was 26 and a half inches when he put him on our our tournament board, and then when he got back, he I mean when he got through with that, he weighed him there in the back of the boat. We got one of those things, and uh, he was uh, or she was six and a half six pounds. pounds. So, right. you know, he I wasn't there because a lot of times I'm going to be fishing plastics. But it's the same thing. I'm going to use a darker, but you you have to create more action. You know. Yeah. The top water, you might want to work a little bit faster, and then, like you said, give it that pause because they're they're being attracted to to the sound and the mm -hmm. vibration, and and as you can see, like on some of that stuff, they, you know, he Greg said he had several misses on top water where they just they just came up and missed it. You know, they can't see any, really any better than we can, a little better. How how deep of water was Greg fishing in that day? Just, you know, I don't think at any point there you you. He was probably over two feet, you know, because yep. I know where he was. He was calling me, so uh, yeah. you know. And then when we can go back in the marshes, you know, we do that mm -hmm. a lot when when you're able to fish it effectively. But you know, on a on a falling tide, and you get outside of some of those openings and start fishing either side of it, and you know, I like I think it's more predictable on a falling falling tide because you you know where they're coming out to, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. When you got a rising tide and they're going they back scattered. in the marshes, it gets dispersed. Yep. But the places they can come out are, are fewer. So they're easier, you know, easier to find like that in the catch. Did he fish in it with any spoons or he just able to fall brown top water? No, he, he, the Paul Browns and those, uh, 
they're they're not skitter walks. They're I can't think of the name of them now. They're, they're rapalas. No, okay. the uh, the suspended baits, the suspended hard baits. Yeah, which I can't think of right now for anything. But um, uh, he doesn't pull out the uh, spoons too much. He mm-hmm. he kind of he he will you know stick with top water Paul Browns if if that's doing the job or till he finds him doing the job. But he. He he's got it, the technique down on that Paul Brown. He he moves that thing, and when you hesitate, it that's when they when you just let it suspend. Well, he likes to. Well, the biggest thing they he get likes, drilled. He, he likes to aggravate us and say, "Well, well you want to be out here?" Uh, oh, I get I, the one. I can't be there. I uh, <laughs> you know I get constant text. You know it doesn't ever stop. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, in late late summer, August is almost here. Uh, the month of August, like we said, all kind of things doing. Uh, flounder now are, start, are starting to sort of. I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of flounder bites. Have you heard anything on that? I haven't. Uh, I haven't really. I haven't talked to. You know, Artie's kind of the connection there. I haven't right. talked to Artie in a little bit, but uh, well, get us a report from Artie. I will. You know, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, August. You know, it's yeah. unbelievable. It's uh, uh, what happened here and how fast it went by. But uh, you know, the regulations going to be this are different now. For flounder, so you need to be up yeah. on that. Okay, but uh, close a couple of months in the fall. So. Yeah, and it's, yeah. you know that fall migration for the, for you the know that's going up. that's going to hurt a yeah. lot of people. That's that's taking a lot away, and yeah. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's well, the law. Well, some and some get mad at trout. Some of the biggest trout of the year are going to be caught here in late summer. That's yeah, the big trout going to be caught. Yeah. And, and make no mistake, there are some big trout in this bay. Yes, For our bay, yeah. you know, that's six and a half pound trout, but I talk to people, you know, constantly that are catching five, six pound trout. And, you know, when you remember growing up or years ago, you did, you couldn't do that here. You know, yeah. I think the net ban had a lot to do with, with that. Yeah, and, and again, the, the, the guys, the inshore guys we talk to, we know a lot of them, they're making a good living off the redfish. I mean, they're, oh, folks, absolutely. they're catching redfish right and left. I am so proud of, of, of all those young guys out yeah. there, Justin and Matt and, and Michael, and, and yeah. those guys are making a living doing this. Yeah. Uh, and and it just, it inshore guides, 25 years ago was almost a thing of the past. You you yeah. couldn't do it, but yeah. I really do believe the net band had a significant amount to do with that because it yeah. was killing a lot of young fish. And yeah. I don't want to put anybody out of business, but we were killing, you know, fingerling yeah. trout and redfish. And the guys that. too, and they're all releasing almost all of them. You know, they might keep a couple of trout. Yes. So they're just yes. releasing those redfish and going yeah. back and uh, catching them. And you know, we do it's not. It's a good situation. We do not keep. Yeah. Any redfish. Well, you got to go over and get on the radio, and that's bad. He got to leave the TV show to go get on the radio show. So we're gonna. I got to, you know. We're gonna let him leave, exit a little bit early, and we're gonna we'll be back there. Talk about a couple other things coming up the rest of the week, and uh, but thanks for running over. We'll, sure, we'll love see it. You. We'll see you probably after the show. I'll Maybe next time we'll have some fish we caught on here. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Thanks, Greg, for letting us see you. Here we can go. Yeah. Appreciate um, the well, show. I'm, I'm gonna go harass him on, on radio soon. Probably. You need we'll, to do that. Do that. Come okay. over. All right. We're gonna take our final break. We'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back. <laughs> we're glad to have Bill, and we just. Uh, we, we, we spend a lot of time together. We, we, we used to spend a lot more time together fishing and everything now, but we're both doing this kind of stuff. It seems like we're spending less time together fishing than we have before. I know we have. So Anyway, let's move on. Fishing game time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Okay, our time uh, would be 3.18 to 5.18 this morning, and this afternoon, 3.46 to 5.46. So that's our time. I do want to mentioned, you know, we talked about Sea Quarters having a kids tournament, having 196 kids there. I, I want to go ahead and put a poster up for the uh, fishing tournament coming up, the, the big Sea Quarters tournament. Again, I want to encourage you to, to uh, you know, participate in it. It's King Mackerel Shootout. It's the 18th an- anniversary and uh, there's a million fifty thousand dollars to donate it and to pay out twenty thousand dollars it's, it's it's just phenomenal that little tournament and all you know all i was thinking all fishing communities should have some kind of fishing tournament where the proceeds goes to some kind of good cause like you know leukemia research cancer research uh, uh hungry uh, you know feed the hungry or whatever just having a tournament where the proceeds go there it would be good i know uh i i, I appreciate the folks at sea quarters 
uh, Jimmy Crowder's family that uh, kept it going, and Mayor Lawhon, and all, all that staff down there that's been been phenomenal in, in doing it and all. I do want to mention, uh, as we're getting ready, we're talking about late summer fishing and all, the August, like I say, is a, is a challenging month. And But uh, like we're talking about, the water temperature and the water being sealed, the storms coming in, but like Bill was talking about earlier, get that moving water and get in that moving water. I, I cannot emphasize that enough. And that's where the feeder creeks come in. If the tide's not doing anything, even on neap tides, you can still get in those feeder creeks where the channel is there and, it, and you can uh, uh, get some action. And again, it's funny how different fishermen just have their go-to bait. You know, like, like I mentioned, Greg, Greg was not, he's not crazy about fishing spoons. Uh, I, I will not go fishing without a spoon in my tackle box and I use it um, uh, most occasions on fishing trips and all. And also, uh, another thing coming up in August, we're gonna be talking about, uh, you know, scallop season will be starting August the 16th. And we'll be talking about the, uh, I'm, I've scouted out and I'll tell you basically where the scallops are. And I don't mind telling my viewers, and you, you can go down there and find them yourself. And it's going to be an interesting year on, on the scallops. I don't know about the, the, what the research has said or anything, but anyway, it's going to be a fun thing to do. Also, again, like we said, flounder gigging. Uh, you can still go along the shoreline and gig some flounder, or you don't have to have a boat to do it. So August is a good month for that. Uh, fishing, you know, we're going to have amberjack coming in and and you know uh, the the water fishing around the jetties and places like that when it, when the crowd when the tide's going out those big bull reds are going to be out you can catch those big bull reds now from the rocks at the jetties you got to catch the outgoing tide and if you can catch it anytime you can fish some live bait you know in a place like that that's good so you can catch that live bait by just taking your net out there right past the kiddie pool where those rocks are and you can catch some live bait put them on your hook and you'll have a lot of fun but uh, don't get in the water, just fish from the rocks because that water is moving, is moving really fast, okay? So we got to, that's gonna wrap things up. Like I said, we sort of winged it today, didn't have a lot planned, just wanted to talk it. Bill had an exit early, so we're trying to get it all together. So appreciate y'all watching. We've we'll got a, I don't know what we're gonna do the rest of the week. We'll, we'll have a show tomorrow and Friday for sure and uh, be giving away some stuff on Friday. And thank y'all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We appreciate the viewership. Do something good today for your fellow man and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.